Hey everyone, how many of you ran track in school? And how many of you were successful at jumping over hurdles? I was not. I dreaded seeing the hurdles. I would run, you know, the sprinting and even, you know, some of the distance running, that was all fine. But you put a hurdle in front of me and I was, <laughs> it didn't happen, but all I could see was myself tripping on the hurdle and going face first into the cinders, and that would be the end of it. So all I can say is hurdles to me are tripping hazards. How about you? Okay, some of you guys, you just sailed over them and you know, single bound, no big deal. And others of us found them to be tripping hazards. So which side are you on? What did you experience? You know, as I was as I was reading into the word this morning and just spending time with the Lord, I got to thinking about rivers hurdles and our promised land. And so that's what we're going to talk about today is some of the rivers, some of the hurdles that stand between us and our promised land. Uh, what happens when we encounter them, what the word of the Lord says, what the promises are, 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 are that surround them and what happens on the other side? Because, you know, it seems like as I especially look at the Israelites journey, but then as I look at my own life. And, and as I go through saints in the New Testament, you know, there's so many things that that actually became a roadblock, a hurdle, a stumbling block to walking into all that God had for them. And how that's so true for us. Because for each one of us, God's given us dreams, he has plans and purposes for us that are good. But the route to get there can often have some rivers that have to be forded. It can have some hurdles that have to be gotten over. We can get a little wet, smelly, stinky in the process, but God says you're created for forward movement. So again, I was struck this morning as I was, I was actually looking at the Israelites and I had never thought about the fact that they encountered an uncrossable body of water at the beginning of their journey as they were leaving Egypt and it called the Red Sea, and another one called the Jordan, as they were actually preparing to cross over into their promised land. So it's like this journey, this desert time is bookended on each side by a body of water, by an impossibility, by something that has to be crossed in order to, to keep moving into the fullness of what God has. So again, at the beginning, at the very beginning with Egypt, they had to choose, just say choose, they had to choose to follow God out of slavery. As they made that choice and as a people group, and remember people groups are comprised of individuals, so you have a lot going on here. As, as they began to move, then they encountered the impossible Red Sea. So when we encounter that body of water, when we encounter that possibility, the impossibility rather, it's up to God to make it possible. You know, he had to make a way for them to move forward because without him parting that Red Sea, they would have been recaptured. They would have been executed or they would have been taken into slavery, probably a combination of both. But the thing is, God will always make a way for us to move forward. Our past is never meant to hold us back. God will always make a way, but it might not be the way that you would think. So as I was pondering that, I got to thinking, okay, here I am facing the Red Sea. I'd be looking for the boats. OK, I'd be I'd be looking for the boat to get a, the boats to get everyone across because there were so many. OK, that would be my human nature. I'd be looking at it going, well, I can't swim that. OK, so, Lord, what are you? You know, where's the boat? Where's the boat? Let's how, how do we build a boat? But God's in God's perspective. He says, man, you know what? I'm just going to hold the water up on each side. I'm you know, right now. This this Red Sea looks like an impossible wall in front of you you know it's something that you can't cross but what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch the direction of that wall and so instead of standing in front of you as the impossibility i'm going to create walls on either side with a path for you, you to walk through some of you need to hear that right now you're looking at the impossible situation and and it looks like the red sea in front of you and you're trying to find your boat to get across and yet the Lord's saying, I'm actually going to, it takes a step, you know, think about this. Moses had to put his rod out over. There was an action that was required by the leader in this case, by, by you know, he, he was the assigned leader. So he had to be obedient to what God told him to do. 
in order for the, the wall that was going this way in front of them to actually become the size of a pathway that they could walk through. Okay, so things were gonna look differently than what it would look in our human expectation or our human mindset. Okay, so we have to learn to see from God's perspective. Okay, so, but once they got across that, you know, they crossed through the Red Sea, they'd seen the hand of God over and over and over, and yet they still struggled. And I want you to hear that because some of you guys are beating yourselves up because you've seen the hand of God over and over and over, and you're still struggling. Unfortunately, that's part of human nature. So we need to battle that. That's some of the thoughts that we hold captive is those thoughts that come against the bigness of God and the provision of God and the promises of God. We wrestle those things into submission. And we, we grab onto the promises of God, the faithfulness of God. Okay, understand that he has a plan to get us to where he's called us to be. But here's the thing, we have the Red Sea. And then we have the, the Jordan River, which we're going to talk about. But what's in the middle? Well, what's in the middle is desert. Okay, so everything's not coming up roses. I mean, they've left, they've left slavery behind, but it's a tough season. It's a difficult season because they have the promises of God, the word of God, but they're not, they haven't stepped into it yet. They haven't tasted and seen yet. It's just a word. It's just a promise. It's still abstract. It's not concrete. They haven't been able to put their hands on it. Even though they see the faithfulness of God in the journey, the fulfillment of the promise is yet to be seen, realized, tasted, stepped into. So right now, how do things look? Barren. Okay, they're having to wander through the desert. And the thing is, is the desert season, when we're taken into it by the Lord, remember the Lord took them into the desert season. This was his route. That means that there's always a purpose for it. It's, he doesn't do it to torture us. He doesn't do it to make life difficult. He always has a plan. And there's an interesting passage in Exodus 13, 17 and 18 that says, now, when Pharaoh had let the people go, God did not lead them through the land of the Philistines, although it was nearby. For God said, lest the people change their minds when they see war and they return to Egypt. Therefore, just say therefore. So God's looking at the big picture. He's looking at everything. He knows the mindset of the people. He knows that they're not ready for this yet. He knows that they've been in captivity for years. He knows that there's things that they need to learn. Therefore, God led the people around through the way of the wilderness to the Red Sea. So some of this going through the wilderness was actually the intentionality, the heartbeat of God, the loving heart of the Heavenly Father. Now, did they spend longer in the wilderness than they needed? Yes, that was their rebellion. So how we handle these seasons, how we handle the rivers and the hurdles, the dust and the dirt of the journey to the promised land actually determine how long it takes us to make that path. Okay, so did you catch that? God led them into the wilderness because he knew they were not ready to face the Philistines yet. He knew they needed to be strengthened. He knew they needed to be healed. He knew they needed to know him as God. He knew things need to be held captive, other things released, training needed to be taken place. But the length of time there was not his original plan. Okay, you hear me on that? So, so sometimes when we're led into that wilderness and it becomes a hurdle, we need to be asking God what his plan is, where his provision is, knowing that we're journeying through and he will give us what we need for the journey. Because when God leads us into the wilderness, it is always in preparation for the promised land. Let me say that to you again. When God leads you into the wilderness, it is always in preparation for the promised land. The challenge is we don't want to stay there any longer than we need to. We want to stay there long enough for him to teach us, but we don't want to become rebellious or hard-hearted or doubting in that season because that keeps us there longer. So the, the desert season was not only designed by God to prepare them for what's ahead, it was to turn their hearts to him and to also rid them of their slavery mentality. 
sometimes the reason that God takes us to the desert is because our mindset needs to change. I remember when I, when I left my pastoral position at the church, one of the things the Lord said to me is he goes, I want you to spend time with me. It was very important that I do this in conjunction with him. I couldn't do it in my own head the way I saw it. He said, I want you to process with me what you picked up in all the years you were there, not saying anything bad about the group of people, about the leadership, about any of that. I want you to process with me what's religious tradition that you're not to carry with you. What's learned behavioral patterns that you're not to carry with you? What are the hurts and the habits and the hangups that you need healing from? Because you need to deal with all this so that you can journey to the land that I have called you. And I'm going to tell you, as I went through that with the Lord, in some ways it felt dry because I was disconnecting from some things. I was, I was having to wrestle through some hard truths, but it was so free. Because God was equipping me and he was preparing me for the next season. And there were certain things that could not come along because it would have actually kept me in bondage. I would not have been able to do what God had called me to do. The people had to lose their slavery mentality in order to take a new land. So right now, some of us need to lose our slavery mentalities so that we could take the the new land. I, I remember becoming very aware in that season of when I would say, I can't. I can't because, I can't because, I can't because, I can't because. That was one of the things that had to go. I can't because. So, okay, so here we are in this wilderness and on the other side of the desert was their promised land. However, to enter that promised land, they had a leadership change. Remember Moses didn't get to enter the promised land. God allowed him to see it before he died but he wasn't allowed to enter it. Joshua is the one who was going to lead them into the promised land. And just like as Moses had led them out of Egypt, Moses and the people encountered the Red Sea. Now Joshua, a new leader with a whole new generation of people, because remember those who had originally crossed the Red Sea, they had died in the wilderness because of their unbelief and their disobedience. So now we have the next generation along with Joshua having to cross another body of water. Isn't that interesting? In other words, they were up against another impossible situation. But this time, instead of God leading them around, remember back to the Red Sea, the Lord led Moses and the people around the land of the Philistines through the wilderness to the Red Sea because they weren't ready. He was afraid that they would go back or I shouldn't say God's never afraid. He knew that they would they would have this even stronger pull to go back to slavery. Now, here we are with Joshua, another impossibility, but to, in order to step into the promised land. And even in the promised land, there would still be things that have to be conquered. That's, that is a message for another day. Even when we step into our promised land, there's still things that have to be conquered. Okay, that's just the way our journey through life goes because we're to be taking the world for the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so here we are. I wanna, I wanna pick up in scripture, Joshua 3, 7. The Lord said to Joshua, today I will begin to honor you in the sight of all Israel so that they may know that just as I was with Moses, I will be with you. I love that. I love the heart of the father. He knew, he knew the respect the people had for Moses. He knew the battles that they'd walked through. He knew the journey that they'd taken. And he knew that new leaders are questioned. New leaders have to earn the respect, right? And so God's right here. He's having this conversation with Joshua. And he's saying, you know what? Today, I'm going to begin to honor you in the sight of all Israel. I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to solidify you as leader so that the people will know. Isn't it interesting? The people will know by by the action of this water, they're going to know that I'm with you. Okay, so it goes on. It says, you shall command the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant. When you come to the bank of the Jordan, stand still in the river. Just say, stand still. Sometimes to see things part, to see the impossible happen, we actually have to stand still. Okay, that's one thing. And And there's a couple other things here too, but sometimes to see the promises, we have to stand still. Are you in a situation where you need to stand still to see the miracle happen? 
They weren't to move, they were to stand in this moment. It goes on and jo basically we're gonna skip a section, but Joshua goes and encourages the people and he gives them all the direction. And then we pick up at verse 14. When the people set out from their tents to cross over the Jordan, the priests were carrying the Ark of the Covenant before the people. When the carriers of the Ark, which would be the priests with it resting on their shoulders, because that's how they were to carry the Ark, came to the Jordan, the feet of the priests carrying the Ark dipped into the edge of the water. So in other words, they began to step in. It's important, it, it says, now the Jordan overflowed its banks all the days of the harvest. Keep that in mind, it was the time of the harvest and it was, it was floodwaters, okay? But they went and they stepped in. Verse 16, then. So when, when the priest stepped in, because that word then, what happened before? Okay, the priest stepped into the edge of the water. Then the water that flowed down from upstream stood still and rose up in a heap very far away at Adam, the city beside Zarephath. The water that flows down towards the Sea of Arabath or the Dead Sea stopped and was cut off. And the people crossed over opposite Jericho. Verse 17, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firmly on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan. And all Israel crossed over on dry ground until the entire people completed crossing over the Jordan. So again, we have another generation crossing over. They have to, you know, it's a, it's a new generation that's taking up the mantle, the promises of God, and they're actually going to step into it. They're going to get to see the promised land. One of the things, if you study Hebrews 11, which we talk about all the, the saints, okay, uh, all those who, you know, who the Bible just scripture just goes through and names them for their faithfulness. One of the things it states is that not all of them saw the fulfillment of the promises of God. They could only look from afar and believe it. They didn't know necessarily if they would be the ones to step in or not. Here we are with a whole people group. Okay, this is the next generation. Some of you are contending for promises that you're going to watch from afar and contend for because you're actually paving the way for the future generation to step into it. But you have a responsibility, a mandate from God to dream with God, to believe into it, to pray into it, to build faith, to plant seeds, knowing that they will come to fruition rather than coming into agreement with doubt in the wilderness. And there's others of you that you're actually going to step over, just like Joshua and Caleb did. You, you're going to step over and you're going to step into, but how do you get there? Because there was another hurdle here. Also notice that the Jordan River was at flood stage. Why? This is so interesting. Because it was harvest season. Think about that. Here's the Israelite people. They're not in their promised land yet. They're looking across the impossible barrier at the promises of God. But it's harvest season. It's harvest season. The Lord wants to take them into the promised land. He wants to take them into the land flowing with milk and honey. It's harvest season, but they're on the wrong side of the river. And the river's flooded because it's harvest season. Sometimes we see, I, I think one of the traps here is that sometimes we're standing on the cusp of our promised land and we're watching others who are on the other side walking in what God has for them. And we begin to grumble and complain rather than asking the Lord how to ford, how to get across, how do we get through that barrier because there's a promised land and it's harvest season and it's my harvest season. So I just found it so interesting that even as they're looking at this river, it's harvest season. He didn't take them in in a time of drought. He took them in in the time of harvest. He Hear me. He did not take them in at the time of drought. He took them in in the time of harvest. So of course the river is flooded. Of course it's overflowing its banks. And of course it was impossible because where are those darn boats? Where are the rafts? How are we going to get across this? How do we forward this? Should we go down a zillion miles to try to find a narrow point? No, we're to cross into the harvest as, it, as the river is overflowing, but we have to take that step. You know, I, I live not far from a river and when it's at flood stage, they tell you to stay away from it. But you know what? When the hand of God says, you have to cross this, 
and I'm going to make a way, that means that we dip our toes in it to see what God will do. When the priest came to the edge of the river, they had to begin to step in. And that's the point when God began to move, just like at the Red Sea. Same concept when Moses put that staff out, the waters parted, there was action required. And even with this, even with the water rushing up into walls, again, the people had to step into faith to walk through something which made no sense to the natural mind. They had to trust that God would not bring those walls of water crashing down over them, but they would walk through on dry ground. So there's the priests in the middle of the river with the ark as all the people walk through. They all go through looking at those walls of water. Think about that. Wow. Doesn't that, doesn't that get you excited when you, when you think about it? Doesn't it, doesn't it bring some clarity to some of the impossibilities that you're thinking that you're facing right now? And even when you see the flood, how are you positioned yourself? What are you doing? What, what, what's God telling you to do? Sometimes you have to stand and wait like the priests. You wait, you hold the ark and you wait right here. You're going to watch others go through before you get to get there. Or maybe you're one of the ones walking through. Just make sure you're not one staying on the other side going, oh my gosh, is that going to crash down around me? What's going to happen here, God? I don't know what to do because when God is holding up the waters, we walk through. When God is holding up that water, you are created to walk through to the other side. But I want you to hear something. We tend to think, oh, glory, hallelujah. It's all going to be wonderful over there. We're all good. Well, on the other side was Jericho. And that's going to be a message for another time. What happens when we come into our promised land and face the Jericho? Man, we're, we're out of the desert. We're out of the dust, so to say, of the wandering in the desert. We're coming into the land flowing with milk and honey, but there's Jericho. At first, you know what, to get to Jericho, to get to our promised land, we have to ford that river. So I just wanted to talk to you just like hurdles. You know, some people naturally jump hurdles. It looks really easy. And sometimes we're watching others in their journey with the Lord. And we're like, wow, you're just sailing right ahead with the Lord. And here I am. I'm trying to jump that hurdle. I'm looking at it. I'm saying, can you lower it? Can you make it easier? Because I'm going to go fat, flat on my face. And if you're my age, you know what I'm talking about with the cinder track. Okay. And yet the Lord's saying, I'm going to teach you how to get through this hurdle my way and it's going to look different you know right now just in my mind's eye it's like I could see all those hurdles when we were trying to jump hurdles and track and and you know the coach's way was for us to go over them that's what the plan was okay one way or another you were going to get over those hurdles but you know what God would have done he would have taken those hurdles he would have taken them right off the track he would have put them to the sides so they became walls that we could walk through between right on the track right on the ground dry ground without having to jump over because his heart is his intention is for all of us to ford the rivers his way to to get around the hurdles his way because we are created to inherit that promised land so let's pray heavenly father we just come before you and lord it just amazes us that there were there were these impossible bodies of water to cross it at the beginning as they were leaving slavery, as they were leaving Egypt, and at the end, as they were about to enter into the promised land. And Father, so often we get stuck in the middle or we get stuck just looking ahead and not fully stepping into what you have. But God, we want to be like the men and women of faith in Hebrews 11, who whether we get to walk into it full of faith and victory, or Father, whether we see it from afar, full of faith, full of knowing that you're faithful to your promises, full of anticipation. God, that's who we want to be. So, Father, for those looking right now at these impossibles, at the hurdles, at the rivers, at, at the boundaries, at the mountains that are standing between them and their promises, God, we pray right now for your divine key. Are they to, are they to step into the water so it can part? Are they to speak to the mountain and tell it to move? God, you know, you know. And you're going to provide exactly what's needed because that's who you are. So, Father, forgive us when we've despised the wilderness that you have led us into. Because, God, when you lead us in, it's to prepare us to step into our promises. So, Father, forgive us for when we've grumbled, when we've complained, when we've compared, when, when we just look at the dirt, the dust, the brown, 
rather than looking ahead. So right now we adjust our vision to look ahead to the plans, the purposes and promises that you have for us because you tell us that we are here for such a time as this, that you have plans and purposes for us and they're good, they're for our good. So God, that's where we align. So right now, Father, I pray for an infusion of hope to go into each and every person who's listening. Father, that you would fill us that you would provide the nourishment that we need. And Lord, that we would be willing to see things differently, to see them through your eyes because of who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, I think so many people are, are facing hurdles right now to what God's called them to do. For some of you, it's finances. For some of it, you, it's location. For some of you, there's actually some relationship issues. For some of you, it is just restructuring your belief, your mindset to align with the Lord. Um, but there's a lot coming at us. And there's a lot culturally also that is making it more difficult to step into the plan, the purposes of God. But you know what? God has a way. He has a way. Just like he had a way here. He has a way for you. He has a way for those around you. So I really want to encourage you to keep pressing in. I also want to encourage you to share this. Because there's a lot of really frustrated and discouraged people who are aligning with the wilderness rather than aligning with God. And as the body of Christ, we're to be the ones that bring the hope. And in order to do that, we need to be able to see the goodness and the promises of God and, and that he is at work even in the desert. And even when we see these hurdles, when we see the impossibilities, that they're not impossibilities to him. That's, that's where he begins to move. But what's our part in that? And that really struck me with both of these is that there was an action step that needed to be taken. The people couldn't stand back and say, okay, when God opens this, I'll walk through. Or where's my boat? No, they had to actually step in. So what are you needing to step into if you are at that point? Okay, what are you needing to step into? So anyways, I wanna encourage you to share this. Um, yeah, there, we just need that. We just need to infuse hope. We need to infuse who our God is and what he can do. So I wanna encourage you to share this with others. And um, if you feel like you're stuck and you just can't get unstuck and you're going, Ruth, I hear what you're saying but I really feel like I'm stuck. I, I feel like my Egypt is so tightly wound around me or, or my belief system. I know it doesn't align with the word of God, but I, I'm just stuck. Then I want to invite you to go to the website, ruthhendrickson.com and just look for Mashaw, M-A-S-H-A-H. That's our emotional healing and deliverance team. We minister all around the world. And we would love to help you get unstuck because God created you for forward movement. And sometimes we need our friends to come along and help us, you know, push us out of that ditch, you know? And so we would, we would be honored to do that for you. Again, uh, I'm so glad you guys joined me. Feel free to visit the website, ruthhendrickson.com. All sorts of resources on there for you. And also, if these have been blessing you, we just invite you to donate. Again, I always say this, ask the Lord. If he says to donate to this ministry, then you ask him how much? And you do it. And if it's a one-time gift, great. If you become a partner, awesome. We just um, we just want to keep moving forward with all the God that ha all He has for us. And I want you to keep moving forward with all He has for you because you know what? That brings great joy and makes our hearts sing. Okay, that's it for today. So glad you joined me again. Have a great day. And remember, you are here for such a time as this. <laughs>